The National Union of Mine Workers, NUM, has threatened to call a strike at the mining companies De Beers, Exaro and Petra Diamonds after wage negotiations deadlocked at the CCMA. NUM says it has secured a certificate to stage a strike. It says it's finalizing picketing rules with the CCMA. For more, we're now joined via Skype by NUM Deputy General Secretary William Mababa. Uh, William, a very uh, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. What are some of your demands? Morning, man. Obviously, the demands will start with money. Yeah. Can you hear me? Perfectly. Please continue. I'm saying obviously the demands will start with money. Yeah. Is that all? Is that all you're demanding? Pay hikes? No. You, you see, what we requested from these companies, we became generous. And I must be honest and say we became generous. We said to these employers, please, can we extend the last year wage agreements, uh, particularly on the wages and the housing? Uh, the other areas that we have demanded, because we have demanded a shopping list. Now we can deal with these issues in 2021 wage negotiations. Uh, most of those companies, for example, you go to the um, DBS, uh, you go to uh, Petra, you go to Exaro. So the agreement is uh, roughly 7.5, all of them. Now, what we're demanding is that the company must extend that wage increase and then uh, extend the housing. Now, if they've then done that, we then can sign a 12 months agreement and then negotiate uh, from 2021 because of we are not sure of what is then going to happen. Now, this company is then denies. Uh, if you, you have looked at the news, you'll realize that uh, particularly DPS, they have sold diamonds uh, where they've made a profit of 176%. If you look at Exaro, they've declared dividends of 40% uh, in July. Now, if companies uh, operate as such and they tell you that we can't give members even an increase, particularly uh, 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 if you look at their performance, then you ask yourself that it is the thing a realistic or we even killed ourselves to propose uh, what we have then proposed. So it is our view that we became very much reasonable uh, not to put a shopping list that is having 15 demands and 18 demands. And precisely we do have those demands. We submitted to them. But during the wage negotiation, we then said to them, we will put in abeyance other demands. We will only concentrate on housing and the wage increase. But having said that, I can confirm that we did not agree. And uh, I must put it very clear that uh, we do not have any choice. Uh, the likelihood is that uh, heads are going to roll. We are going to prepare for ballots as from next week. And then, yes, after the ballots, uh, because you know in the, uh, in the new arrangements, uh, you have to ballot. We do have the certificate picketing rules uh, that has been done with the CCMA. Uh, what is left for us now is that we need them to have ballots. But I must emphasize that uh, I have received a, a revised offer from um, Petra Diamonds and uh, Yes, I, uh, I can confirm that uh, we are penal beating the, 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 the sentence inside the agreement in principle. Yes, I, I consulted with the branch committees. In principles, they've agreed to the offer. And then the offer is that the company is going to give us, uh, uh, and I want it to be listened because it may be uh, interpreted very wrong. The offer is 5% on the B bands and 5.5 uh, on the A bands. 
and the company is going to give the workers an excratia payment of 5,000 on the A band and a 8.5, 8,500 excratia uh, on, 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 on that offer. So that is the offer. I'm trying to qualify this thing that somebody must not be asking why do we accepted 5,000 and then 8.5, uh, no, 5% and 5.5, and, and to the others we want 7.5 or 8%. The, real, the, the, the reality here is that I'm, I'm saying that there is also on top of that a, an excratia of 5,000 yeah. and an 8.5 in those two categories. So you can then understand that uh, that excratia to us is also a percentage. Actually, uh, that, that was going to be my follow-up because it quite doesn't tally up that you would uh, reject 7.5 and then take 5.5 for a once-off ex gratia. How, how do you tally the numbers? Yeah, I, I think, ma'am, um, we, 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 one tallies the numbers in the sense that... Uh, um, when you 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 take uh, 5.5, I don't know whether I'm still visible because uh, no, absolutely, I was we can to see you. Manage the light. Yes, I'm trying to manage the light because it's too big. Um, if you if you take um, 5,000 and 5.5, let us assume a person and 7,000, and then you take 5,000 and uh, 5.5. How much is that in percentage? Maybe you must tell me. I'm just so thinking me, that it's a once-off um, amount. Tell me, are you going to extend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you going to extend the same courtesy to De Beers and Exaro that you're extending to Petra, where you can negotiate the reduction of the, the demanded rate uh, for, as you say, the excrusher amount? <laughs> I, I think I think I think uh, every case is judged on its on its own merits. Uh, I'm sure you you you, you are a news person. I'm sure you are you you, you are aware that uh, Petra Diamonds was put on sale, unless you don't know. So that that is a company that is not normal. You can't compare them with GPS. Okay. You can't compare them with Exaro. They are far different. That's why to them, they never even declared a dividend. So yep. unfortunately, when we talk, we must know that we are talking about an apple and a banana and an orange. No, absolutely. And then whether all of them, they are fruits, but they are not the same. A, a banana is a banana. I take it here that uh, if it was in that category, I was to classify uh, one as banana, one as apple and one as orange. Now, the situation of Petra, if you can go, if your investigation is, if there is a diamond company that is in trouble, one of those companies is DB, is, is Pedra. And, and and I want to be honest uh, honest with you, as, 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 as a leader, I want to appreciate that um, if there were another company, they were to cry foul and, and use that, and even as issue Section 189. DBS issued Section 189, and they are not in the same situation as Pedra, but they issued Section 189. I've got two Section 189 of their two operations where they, uh, they, they retrench workers during this coronavirus. Yeah. But the very same company didn't uh, make a retrenchment. And I'm asking that as journalists, as leadership, we must provide leadership in this country. We must not promote uh, something that is not there. Because if now we are going to promote an issue where uh, it must then come as if uh, we treated Petra different uh, than uh, uh, others. I will say that looking at the situation of those companies um what we have done in petra qualifies to be done in petra and what we'll go and do in dps qualify to be done in dps uh, uh, for example I, I don't know uh whether you know what is the offer of dps and i don't know whether you know what is the offer of exaro that has paid dividends is five percent five percent but they've declared dividends of forty percent now, do you expect that that company can pay 7.5? That company can pay 7.5. Their finances are not bad. And you must take it into account that Exar was working during coronavirus. Yes, the, the diamonds were not working. The market outside was not there. But as we speak today, 
I'm telling you that uh, there is a payment that uh, there is a sale that uh, a, a DPS has done, and that that payment was 176 percent, jumping from their uh, previous payment. So that 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 is money. Yeah, that is yeah. money. So those com those two companies they do have money. So we are judging every case on its own merit. So looking at the situation of Petra. I'm saying that, but if you want to come back to me and justify that we are unreasonable, I'm saying to you, go to your archives, go to your researchers, let them research the situation of Petra, and let us come and debate. And you will tell me that under the circumstances, don't you think that the offer that Petra put on the table is reasonable yeah. looking at their situation? So in that about, I don't want I... to talk... I totally understand that you have to fight for your constituency and you have stated up front the financials of uh, the two uh, mining companies for this year which are looking really good according to the numbers that you are giving. But the other uh, argument is they don't, they operate in a, in a, in a bigger environment where the South African economy, Stats SA says the uh, South African economy contracted by 51 percent this year and they operate within that environment. Are you taking this into consideration at all as you negotiate uh, the, the payment hikes? Uh, definitely uh, we, we do. I, I will take it that uh, maybe also go back. You know, you know there is a very interesting story about what we are discussing. Uh, you, you see, let me see. there is a company called Musobo. In terms of coal, that is one of the smallest, smallest operations. They've agreed uh, in terms of the very of the issue. They, they gave us 7.5. They gave us, we have signed a five-year agreement on housing. The wage one is one year. The housing is five years. They are going to increase housing by 900 rand every year until five years. 900 rand. Now, in that five years, their housing will be 9,000. And it's a small operation. You can go to your archives and investigate Musawa uh, Collier. It's a very small one. Now, if they can cry and tell us about uh, those economics and the 51% that you talk about and afford to pay us 7.5 and all these things, you go to the big guns. Pella, if you talk of DPS, uh, you are talking of big guns. When you talk of Exaro, uh, you are talking of the big guns. Exaro is one of the big operators uh, in the code. Uh, and then they can afford 7.5. I, I don't understand what you are talking about now. Yeah. When you go to the finances of Exaro, it doesn't show that they can afford 7.5. Unless you know something that I don't know. Unless I'm telling you, is there a company that can go to the board during the very same time, because you are, you, you are talking about the very same time, what, what I'm talking about is a recent issue. Uh, yeah. It is something that it came, to, it came to the media in August that Exaro declared dividends of 40%. Now tell me, a company that is operating in economics that is not good, can it pay a dividends of 40%? Maybe let me understand from your side. Now we hear you. So now you've secured uh, the certificate to stage a strike. What needs to happen now for the actual uh, event to take place? No, for the actual event to take place, let me take you through. When we get the certificate, we got the certificate last week. When, when we got the certificate, we were under level two. Now when we decide because we met with all these companies after the certificate like exaro we met with exaro on on wednesday and we did not agree this wednesday and we did not agree now the certificate we have the picketing rules we have what we applied now is variation we applied variation because when we get the certificate the level two was talking about gathering of 50. Now, under level one, the gathering is 500 because it's an outside. The strike will never be in a boardroom. 
will be then be outside. Now we have requested a variation from the CCMA that they must vary 50 by 500. So we are, we are waiting for a confirmation from the commissioner to vary the uh, 50 by 500. Then immediately they finish uh, making a variation. It will then take us just one day. The members will 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 vote, but I must I must confirm that yes, we went to the workers, uh, we tested their mandate. They then said to us, if by Wednesday you can agree, particularly with Exaro, make everything possible because we also told them about this thing of fifty and then five hundred. Yeah, they said make follow all the processes, and when we finish, come and ballot. Uh, if they don't give us what we want, we are going on strike. Uh, we, um, we, we, we are just waiting for to for the GPS um, application also to be certified. But because what you need to understand is that we discussed things in level two, and actions are going to happen in level uh, one. So numbers are now having a problem because you will find that a picketing rule talks about um, fifty. And then level two, level one talks about 500. Now, yeah. when all those things are done, uh, we will then update you uh, and say that, no, everything has been done. Our members has voted. And then when are we submitting uh, notices? And then when we start the strike, uh, we will also make your life very good that now your uh, television will see what you normally did not see for almost five months, six months. Uh, 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 big gatherings where uh, workers are really struggling for a better life for all. And we commend you in, in the excellent work you're doing in protecting workers' rights. But as you know, these days uh, we interact with social media and uh, we have some Tepo Mothala on Twitter who says, uh, that new man doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, when we, the viewers, are also confused too, bananas and apples. Next time, please invite Philip Villagazi, their deputy president, is a very good uh, communicator. Um, do you feel that uh, we, as unions, you, you, you give out messages that your constituencies understand properly, clear messages? It is up to you because uh, I think uh, that uh, honorable viewer was supposed to link what I'm talking about. You asked me precisely to say, why are you going to, why are you not giving Exaro and DPS the same as what you have done in Petra? I have said the situation of Petra, DPS and Exaro is not the same. And that is the area where I given an example. And you told me, you, that you understand me. Now, if the viewer did not understand me, I am having a problem because we can't understand easily and quickly uh, because we are also not the same. And I will not blame you, but I will take it that uh, you asked me, I responded. It is you who's talking to me. If you believe that what I've explained uh, doesn't go well, you didn't understand uh, I can explain, or unless you tell me that you don't understand me. But your response to me was that you understand me. I don't want to run to politics. I know that person. You know, I know that person. I know Villagazi. Villagazi is the deputy president. I worked with Phil Philip Villagazi as the chairperson in the province in Limpopo. And then uh, as a chairperson, I was the secretary. Now, I know the comrade that is commenting. So those are the politics. I can confirm with you, and if you want me to explain, I can explain those politics. But I don't think that we were in this interview for the politics. No, no. The issue is not between me and Villagas. With me and Villagas, Villagas is the deputy president. But if he prefers that a Villagas must talk, he must understand it's not Villagas who's negotiating here. Yeah. It's me. If he wants Villagas to come and explain things, Villagas used to come here and explain. There are issues that the deputy president of the union is dealing with. There are issues that the president is dealing with. There are issues that the general secretary is dealing with. Negotiations is part and parcel of the general secretary and the deputy general secretary. That's why in all these negotiations, you will make the observation that the president is not there, the, 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 the deputy president is not there. 
and I can I can go and show the honourable uh, leader all the agreements that I signed. I recently signed an agreement in Mudikwa, where the honourable comrades, I'm sure, he come from that area, and then he must tell me whether that agreement is bad. Even the very same agreement that we are signing today, or tomorrow, or Monday of Petra, I will ask the honourable to see the agreement. Uh, he will realise that uh, some of us we don't talk. Uh, I can show him the Msovo agreement. He can see by himself. I can show you more than, uh, for 2019, I can show you more than 50 agreements that I've signed. For 20, 20, 2019, as we speak now, I can show you four agreements that I've already signed. And if there is anything, because the members that I signed for those agreements were satisfied and they gave me a mandate. Yeah. But that's why I'm saying I don't want to run politics. I know the comrade. I know which agenda is running. But he can continue. He can send other messages. Those who know the truth, they will also assess because they know the comrade. So, William, let me ask you lastly, uh, and it's a general question. We're talking today about Exaro and De Beers and Petra. But I'm sure multiple mining entities have been affected by the lockdown and the resultant uh, loss of business. Just give us a sense of how workers have been affected in the mining sector by the lockdown? Uh, Ma'am, uh, workers are, are highly affected. As I speak, there are workers that have been retrenched. As I speak, uh, there were workers that were not paid uh, during the lockdown uh, for precisely for the mere fact that you are aware as a presenter that um, uh, tariffs were paid and stopped. As we speak, there are members that did not get their either tariffs or UIF. And I want to also make the distinction because people believe that tariffs and UIF are the same things. And they are not the same. The workers that were retrenched during the lockdown, they were never paid their UIF. In the olden days, UIF, we used to call it blue card. Now, when they retrench you, you must go to the Department of Labor and get paid you are UIF, which you call blue card. But during the lockdown, the workers were paid tariffs. Now, the tariffs and the UIF confused the system. Uh, when workers were claimed tariffs by the companies and get the retrenched, the system shows that a worker having claimed a tariffs for three months, meaning that by the time he claims, the system show him that because when they load the, the, the tariffs, they were loading them for three months. Now, I can tell you that uh, workers are highly affected. That's why SNUM, in our last any, we took decision or resolutions that some of the workers who are um, particularly at Matlosana, we need to assist them and buy uh, food parcels. I know comrades from Kangra in uh, KZN, they were affected. I know comrades from uh, Samanko, both in Limpopo, in Stillport, and um, in, in Rustenburg. They were then affected. So I can assure you that, um, yes, during this coronavirus uh, lockdown, members were severely, severely, not just affected, they were severely affected. Uh, we are even afraid that uh, many of the workers out of this lockdown, they will have been blacklisted, uh, because we have, we have already seen the trends uh, where many of our members uh, are blacklisted. Let's but we are trying by so adjudicate. I can show you uh, that I've adjudicated more than five companies yeah. where 82% of our members were blacklisted and we were working with the company, we are working with the credit bureaus that we don't think that uh, blacklisting people during this coronavirus is fair. And Let's, we think that we are, we are winning the game. Yeah. Let's thank you for your time uh, this afternoon and a hope for you to come back and update us uh, on whether the strike goes ahead or not. I will definitely come. William Mabapa is the uh, General Secretary for the National Union of Mine Workers.